We're back, baby. It's the Charity Tribe. Pitch your free throws because they are free. Fisher, Tosopolis, Snacks, Kreider, and our guest today. Uh, one of the stars, the new TV show on Apple TV, Platonic. We have Trey Hale joining the yeah. boys. Trey, how you doing, man? I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you for having me, fellas. It's a pleasure to be here. How does it is it is it a little weird to be starring alongside Seth Rogen? It still doesn't feel real. Rose Byrne, it's crazy, right? It still doesn't feel real, bro. Honestly, the other day somebody was asking me a question about it, and I referred to him as Seth, like because it's just so normal for me to be like, yeah, like I hit up Seth the other day, and I was just like, Jesus, it's it's absolutely insane, especially considering like, I mean, as you guys I'm sure know, like everything he made growing up was something that I watched, um, and like obsessed over. So now, like, working with him, there was times on set where I actually, like, copied jokes that he wrote years ago in movies that, like, I, like, just plagiarized him, not even realizing. And he was like, yo, that was really funny, but I, I actually wrote that shit, like, years ago. I was like, oh, man. So, yeah, it's been a real full, full circle type of moment, bro. Yeah, well, not, not to get ahead of ourselves, but we're going to tease a little bit that we're going to ask you the top five Seth Rogen movies at the end of this than the show here so just keep work. that in the back of your mind i love it i'm already charging up right now i love it good i mean it's a it's a game we play on our show we'll just throw out a random actor and then we'll be like, all right what's their top five movies and you being close with him and now being on a first name basis with with him yeah. it's only it's only fitting that we do that talk to us about the process how was the audition process like what was that first call that you got it like uh, kind of like, you know, that long road that we all know in the back end can be really difficult and really long and challenging. Yeah, bro. It was um, it was typically normal. Like I started with a self-tape um, that turned into a callback. That turned into another callback. And then there was like a rewrite of the character as a whole, which was crazy. But I knew I was on to something when they started rewriting shit for me. So I was like, OK, this is a good sign that they clearly like me. Um, and then I got called in to do a chemistry read with Seth, which was just the scariest audition of my entire life because literally <laughs> like you signed into a zoom and then he just popped right up like okay let's start reading oh, and and it's like oh my god it's really him um and yeah but that went really well bro and then yeah i got to the table read that i got to do which was equally as scary because then it's seth in real time rose in real time and all the producers and everybody that essentially is responsible for making the show watching you um but yeah man it all went well and uh yeah, it's really cool to see it all come to fruition now. Like now that the show's on air, it's been tough. when you when you were in that chemistry yeah. read with Seth. So if you watch the pilot, like mm. the chemistry between the two of y'all in that first scene in, in the bar, it's there. Like you're feeding mm. off of each other. The rhythm of the comedy, like many people that you know have studied comedy and know, know it well, know that pace is everything. And y'all were y'all were just all mm. all four of y'all in that first scene, just picking up with what everyone else is putting down. Did you like the nervousness and the anxiousness when you see Seth Rogen? Did that dissipate when you started getting into it? Because it's very clear that y'all have great chemistry, just as as an aside. Well, I, I appreciate you saying that, man. That's that's awesome to hear. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it was weird, bro, because we had we had so much creative freedom on the show. Like it was a very collaborative set, which was super cool. It was honestly, we were spoiled as actors. I'm kind of nervous for the next go round because I know it's not going to be that free and like people open to just you kind of throwing your jokes um, and riffing and improving. But to that same point, that shit was really scary to do with someone the likes of Seth Rogen. So a lot of the times, like we really like let him take the lead, um, and if we riff. Me, Andrew Lopez, Vinny, we were kind of just lucky to ride the wave that he set, man, and, and kind of riff on him. And and he, him and Rose throughout the whole show kind of made us look good um, with the stuff they do because they're just, they're masters, bro. Like, it was really like a master class every day watching them. And, and it was crazy how you would think getting all that freedom and doing comedy and stuff would be like easier than the, than the drama and the, and the deep stuff. But, and Seth actually made this point. It's actually a lot harder because at least with the drama and the deep stuff at times, it's just black and white. Like, you know what the scene is like, there's no moving, there's no switching it up. But when you're doing comedy and you, and you have the opportunity to crack a different joke or go this way or take it that way, you really got to listen to your scene partner and you really got to react to what they're doing. Um, so yeah, it was very stressful, nerve wracking, but it was dope, bro. It, it really was. Once we started to get it too, by like the later episodes, when we started feeling it, oh, it was a wrap. Then we were really, we were really talking our shit. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's it's a good point because 
you know, and you played football, right? So, mm-hmm. and I would love to get what kind of like what you took from athletics because people, because athletes who turn actors always talk about the connection and how it's sometimes an easier transition because of the comfortability of working with their bodies and so on. Uh, but you know, timing is everything. Yeah. So that level of focus and like paying attention where as in a drama, in a drama scene, you know, you could have those moments of being a little, le- little less connected yeah. where in a, in a comedic scene, you have to be, absolutely tethered to whoever you're working with because if the timing and the delivery is not right it doesn't matter how well the jokes are written it's not going to be funny yeah man and, and it's you know and it's credit to i don't want people to see this and be like oh he thinks drama actors aren't tight because it's like no what they do is pretty insane as well but it's different <laughs> muscles that are being flexed and yeah that comedic muscle as i learned on platonic this was my first real comedy undertaking in general so i was really learning as well like yeah it, it's a different muscle man and when you work with people like seth and rose and our writers our incredible writers and creators nick Stoller, francesca that also know how to get the best out of their actors and scenes and make like this grounded you know type of comedy that's still wacky and and collaborative and free it was it was just a lot of fun bro it really was yeah, man. Uh, talk to us about that athletic tie, though. Like, how was oh, it transitioning yeah. from an uh, from a football player to you know acting? What were the similarities that you found that helped you know move you through athletics to the entertainment space? Yeah, bro. I mean, so I'm not a classically trained actor by any means. I, I took I took uh, classes at UCLA. I took it as a minor later on down the road. But like how a lot of these guys get to go to these big like workshop classes and all that stuff. I never really did that. Um, and I tell people all the time, like, football was my acting training because it was like, for me specifically, I knew very, very quickly that I wasn't about to go to the NFL. Like, you know, UCLA really became a means for me early on to just get a free education. And I was very blessed to do that. But I started throwing paint at the walls in college really early when I knew, like, yeah, this is this is really for me because the guys that want to do this, they really care. They are on a whole different wavelength. I mean, I'm trying to go to college and have fun and, and all that stuff. But to that point, I still was a Division One football player, and I still had a commitment to my team, and I still had to go to practice and show up every day at, you know, 6 in the morning, 5 in the morning at times, and then manage a, a class schedule so that I could stay eligible to still play for my team and contribute in the, in the little way that I did. So that was a character, bro. We used to say this stuff at practice all the time, like, yo, false enthusiasm is the best type of enthusiasm because you don't want to wake up and go to practice every day. I don't care what anybody says. Like, there's maybe a couple guys who love it enough that they just live, you know, breathe, sleep football. But for most of the time, when you do that for like two months on end, you'd be like, yo, I do not want to go to practice today. But you have to find it somewhere. And I used to say that was me acting right there. I was practicing. I was I was putting on a character in front of my coaches, in front of my teammates. And it was certainly rooted in my reality because I wanted to be like an athlete as well. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, man, I feel like it, it, there's a lot of correlation. Then on top of that, it's like going and playing in front of like 90,000 people. That in itself is just an insane thing to do. And I, and I played a little bit. I wasn't even that tight. I was like a special teamers guy and a, and a little yeah. contributor in the way. Like, <laughs> don't get it twisted. I wasn't nice out there. But yeah, like even that, like you go on that field in the Rose Bowl and there's like 80,000 people screaming. That is a wild situation. And like oh, yeah. if you could find, compartmentalize those feelings and take that to a set, I feel like there's no set that's really going to be as intimidating as that. 80,000 people screaming, crazy if fans all on you. That's how I look at it. You know what I'm saying? That, and that's what I feel like has helped me thus far in acting um, in my career is kind of looking at it like football, treating it like athletics. I guess the – yeah, I don't think we've ever heard an answer like that, like where they perform – like a performance in practice. Like, I mean, it makes complete sense. Like I don't know how many – you know – you have to be crazy in the head to get up at 5 a.m. and start, like, J.J. plotting, like, <laughs> with the tackling dummies. Yeah, man. And, I mean, and, too, it's funny, like, I was always a team showman, though, as well, which is funny. Like, I was a rah-rah guy. I black. Like, at one point, I think to the, the tail end of my career, I had this honor that we gave to UCLA. Where we, I had the sledgehammer, and it was up to me to, like, do these crazy scenes before our game to hype the team up. And sometimes it would even end up with me and our defensive coordinator at the time, Jeff Ulbricht, who's a stud, amazing coach, 
uh, we would get in the middle of a circle and literally smack <laughs> each other across the face, like on some, <laughs> like some crazy, real, any given Sunday type shit. And yeah, so I think looking at that too, that was a character that I played for my team. So now that I'm even talking about that, I'm seeing more of these correlations that, yeah, man, I would do that yeah. every week in these scenes that I would think. And like, you know, I'm not really that guy who's always screaming and wilding and being crazy, but it would get there sometimes. So, yeah. Fits the bill. Yeah, yeah. right. There's, def- exactly. there's definitely a yeah. distinction, though, of having a, you know, multi-thousand person crowd versus being on set where the only people around you sure. are the crew members, the other actors. So when there's the crowd like that, like you don't have to hype yourself up. Like you can get that energy from them and it fuels you. But when you're on yeah. set and you don't necessarily have that, what are ways that you kind of either lock in or get in the zone um, before you start a scene? Sure. Uh, music is always just kind of like the go-to, I think for everybody. Music. I heard, I forget what actor it was, but I heard a while ago, this, this guy talk about how he makes playlists for each character that he plays. And like, he'll just listen to that character's playlist to get in that headspace. Um, so I started doing that a little while ago. That helps a lot. Um, yeah, man. And, and really just when, when you get there and, and, and working with a great crew and, and great actors help a lot with, with getting in that, in that mode. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you're doing something that's very funny. For instance, if you're doing a comedy or a scene that's supposed to be played the right way and you get to play with Seth and Rose they make it so easy to kind of like, oh, fall into like, oh, that's a good joke to hit or like, you know what I'm saying? Like, or they're just going to take this and and they do such insane things that it's so easy to react to. Like I'm watching this show right now and there's scenes where Rose is being ridiculous. I don't want to give too many spoilers, but she's like on a bender going crazy. And as I'm watching it in real time, I'm seeing me laugh in the show and I'm like, I am not acting right there. Like that is 1000% a real laugh that I was doing on the moment that just worked because she was so funny and for the scene. So yeah, man, how working with good people, music, there's a lot of ways, but yeah, those are mine, I would think. So. Yeah. You're bringing me back a little bit. I used to, I'm like opposite <laughs> of you. I got into sports now, but I was classically right. trained in theater. We oh, actually, sure. before right. I even, before I even give that little anecdote, we all went to the university of Texas. I think our, I think you played against time, us. Yeah. We I think did. you played against yeah. us. We yeah, we won yeah. once. We won. We won epically once Y'all in Dallas beat us. Stadium. Yeah, that was epic. But you guys beat. You guys smoked us uh, two times prior to that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I think I went to the one where we played you guys in the Holiday Bowl. That was in San Diego. Mm-hmm. We, we won. We won that one, and then yeah, you beat us, and then I think we took one more from you guys. So. Yeah, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. Classically trained Sp- actor. How was that? It was, it was, it was, you know what, but you brought up a really, cause you, it clicked to me because you brought up something that I used to do. Mm. I used to make a playlist for every show I was in. There it is. It helped. It, I get, yeah. I'll, I'll get, go through my phone. Like even to this day, like, cause I've had Spotify since like, since caught back in college, mm. like, Oh, like this play has a playlist, this play has a, and it helps you kind of get in the time period, get in a mode, get in a rhythm, like, yeah. and like music is so informative you know it was one of the best like little i didn't even learn this in theater class i learned this in an english class like you know literature music and all that is so informative of like a time period yeah how people felt that time period and so like using utilizing that like uh is is very it it can be very very helpful so i'm I'm, it's a very interesting thing i'm glad you do that it's cool it's like a really helpful music can really get you in in the mindset in the zone yeah man i wish i could remember the actor that i heard that from I'd be watching a lot of those Hollywood Reporter roundtables. It's just a bunch of like stars we'll say it's talking Jeremy about their Strong. journeys. It's really cool. We'll just, we'll just, we'll I was about Jeremy to say, Strong. we'll say it's Jeremy Strong. <laughs> yeah, that would be that guy. That guy gets after it, I heard. He's like, he goes like goes hard in his method stuff. He's dope though, man. He's amazing. Yeah, I saw him go to his childhood home in like, like an interview recently. Mm-hmm. And like he walks up to this childhood home. I'm like, what is he about to do to this home? <laughs> like, right? You can't like he just like saunters up to him. Like anything could happen with the first this guy. Thing he says is like, um, oh, it's yeah, so man, effervescent. It, You're like, what are you? What? What are you even saying, dude? Like, what? Bro? Like, <laughs> like, <I, laughs> who is this guy? 
the water it's like the water hole of my childhood i'm like dude what are you talking about it's like a normal looking house bro yeah who are some of your inspirations like who are some guys like you look to and 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 actresses and and female actors you look to you know because obviously we mentioned seth but you've spoken about rose a lot and, and we know how talented she is and how comedically you know on her toes and how like you know raw and like you know real she is who are some like actors female male like that have really inspired you uh, one of them is Vince Vaughn. I watched a lot of Vince Vaughn stuff growing up. He's <laughs> someone that like, I feel like I modeled a lot of like my comedic timing after, at least try to. But then also I've always loved that he kind of dips his toes into both worlds. Like we'll randomly do some like serial killer stuff, like Norman Bates and Psycho, you know, he'll do Jurassic Park, which is super funny. Um, but then like, yeah, he's really funny. So I really, really enjoy watching him. Um, I'm trying to think, dude, there's so many guys that I, I, I look up to it, it, I know we've talked about it a lot, but I, I really can't stress enough how like pivotal Seth was. It's, it's really, it's, it's really wild. Like, like being able to work with him. Cause yeah, the, the things he wrote, like just the, the weed humor and all those things, it was so, it was everything me and my friends watched as kids. Um, so he's great, but like even Nick Stoller, bro, the guy that created Platonic uh, with Francesca, forgetting Sarah Marshall, like that movie was so funny and, and, and so pivotal to the things that I thought of. Um, so yeah, man, it's it's been great to work with them, and and I will say, getting back to Rose because she's so good, like and and people know it, but it's like I want to make it so clear, like Rose is truly one of the greatest actors ever, I think. Like, she is a true chameleon, and when you watch her in real time do something like platonic and really just lock in and be able to create these moments of reality all the while being wacky and vulgar, but you still, like, don't think she ever comes off vulgar because her delivery is so soft, but yet she can go do insidious and, and literally freak you out. Like, do horror horror, too. Like, not just some, like, slasher wild stuff. Like, no, legitimate give you nightmares horror movies. Um, she's, she's truly one of the best to do it for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, not, not to mention Seth and her have great chemistry too. Oh, I mean, they've worked together so many times. It's wild. I was like, I was like, is this like reminiscent of their real life? Because like, you can <laughs> think, cause they've made stuff before. Yeah. And I'm like, all right. Like her husband's like this handsome, like, you know, sharp <laughs> dude, right. Bobby kind of volley vibes. Like, you know, Bro, he showed up to the premiere and I got butterflies. I'm not gonna lie. Like I was like, this guy is tight. He he's 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 really really cool. Bobby Cannavale, great actor too. Yeah, I'll always stand by. I thought vinyl was a robbery of like not renewing on season two. I thought that was right. that show was on. It got me absolutely jacked and ready right. to go. Uh, what else? What other projects? I mean, I know we know you, you just have All American coming out. We had Spencer Paysinger and Dane Mork, the creators of that, on our show pretty recently. Oh, that's actually. Cool. Yeah, they're they're great dudes. How was working on that? Yeah, it was great, man. That was like I, I always told my reps when we started doing this that I wanted to play a football player. Like I just felt like it was it, we just had to find that situation, um, and then it fell in my lap. And yeah, it's been really cool. It was a little intimidating at first because you're stepping on a show with so much fanfare and so much notoriety already, um, and and those fans love hard. Uh, so yeah, it was nerve wracking, but it's been so fun. I get to play the position that I actually played. So like, I remember when I booked it, they were like, Hey, we got to get you a stunt double and a body double. I was like, you're insane. (laughs) I'm going to be doing all my own stunts. Uh, so that's been nice. And, uh, yeah, I play a single father. Tom Cruise in it. What'd you say? Said Tom Cruise in it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got all around stunts. And it's great because they have (laughs) to let me win every rep. Like I have to win the show. So it's, it's, it's really the best. Um, but yeah, man, it's cool. I play a single father on the show, which has been really strange. I have a nice parallel life. I'm expecting my first child in two and a half months. We're having a little girl. Oh, wow, congratulations. Um, hey. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, thank you so much. Very excited. Very excited. How's that? How is that? Is that even a little surreal right now? How, like, how prepared slash underprepared do you feel at the same time? Um, <laughs> it's, it's, we're we're very prepared. We feel very ready, which is which is huge, yeah. and it's a blessing. But we're also like every night, our pillow talk now is like, "Yo, we're about to be parents. <laughs> like, is this crazy? <laughs> like, there's about to be a whole little kid in here. It's it's wild, man. But we're we're so excited. Uh, 
and it's just been crazy too with everything going on in my life right now. Like you know, with with being able to book something like All American and then the debut of Platonic going as well as it's been. Now my little girl coming. I just feel very blessed and lucky these days, brother. For real, for real. Yeah, it's a it's it's a thing in life we've come to find. We talk about it in sports a lot. When it rains, it pours. But like yeah. it could be a it could be a good thing or a bad thing. So it's I mean, hearing you now are stoked that it's like a good thing for you at the moment where like all these good blessings like come into like you know your life and it's working out. Yeah. As a kid and, uh, how, how were you? We asked uh, one of the guys from and I think I have an inkling on the answer. But we asked one of the guys from Ted Lasso this: When did you know that? platonic would have like the type of success it could have like when did you know it was going to be a good show when did you feel like that confidence because i'll tell you i'll tell you and i'll tell you his answer straight up he had no idea until he was watching it <laughs> really and, yeah. which is crazy which is yeah which is crazy to think right yeah yeah thinking it's, it's seeing that show i can kind of get that point from an actor's perspective being on that set and like seeing this ted lasso character and it's so sweet like are people gonna like yeah. this but yeah that show is that show is incredible <laughs> just finished up um, yeah, I mean, I, I was always pretty confident in platonic. I mean, just because the office is attached, like, and they've done this before. We, we, we were kind of very lucky that we went into our show knowing that we had a, a family between Nick, Seth and Rose that had worked together on the neighbors movies, um, which were very, very funny to me. So I kind of was, was pretty confident through whole time. Um, but there were moments on set, like tonally, where we were trying to f like figure it out. I remember, and and credit to Seth because I because because I think the biggest thing about Platonic and what makes it so awesome, so dope, is that there's no will they, won't they with Seth and Rose, right? Like they're truly friends in this show. You never get a vibe of 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 you know, like they're liking each other, that they're going to end up together. Like, no, that's not what we're doing here. And naturally, I remember when we were filming the show, a lot of the times when you have a show that lets you improv and have freedom and stuff, some of the jokes and ways that we would lean towards would just kind of subconsciously go towards that, where it would kind of push them together. And then we'd make jokes and be like, oh, but you, you know, you got to be banging or something, whatever that type of stuff. And that's why I say credit to Seth because he always nipped that in the bud right there. Like, and he was such a leader on set and stuff. And he would always be like, no, like, that's not what this is. Like, we are just friends, bro. Like, it's, it's, it's never going to go down that route. And now watching the show. And there was times when we would do that where it kind of sucked for, like, me or my co-stars, Andrew and Vinny, because the jokes we would say would be really funny. Like, we'd be like, oh, that's a funny joke. But it would like, nah, that's not working for the storyline that he that he's envisioning and that him and Stoller are creating. And now, yeah, man, hindsight 2020, when you when you see it come to fruition, it's like, wow, that is what makes the show so brilliant, in my opinion. And credit to their genius and just knowing that that was the vibe and sticking well, to I, it. I think that's like a commentary yeah. on probably why they had the impetus to make this show to begin with, right? Because male female like friendships is a commonality in in life mm -hmm. that that just happens but the context of what like film and tv mm -hmm. has told us about those is oh no like they're going to end up getting together right like that's the expectation right. that we now have like you guys are probably making those jokes and and you don't even know like we're predisposed to make those jokes because we've been we've been Literally. Fed, like again and again and again so it's yeah, it's really interesting that i could see how that would be why they would want to make this show to make other people watch a show and, and know that yeah, that's okay. And, that's okay to have a friend that's a girl yeah. or the opposite way. And, and it works that way it, and it's good. There's no, there's no bigger reinforcement than just right. what the title is, you know, like right. they, can't, they can't spell it out for you anymore. Well, and in, like, and in the opening platonic. scene, like, <laughs> the, the that's husband it. who I, I, that actor is so funny that plays Rose Byrne's husband. Oh, Charlie. Charlie yeah, he's hilarious. Best, and he's man. just like he's the, the most, supportive like husband in the opening scene where he's like no like you should call that guy you should go like get and it's like right. wow yeah the, the expectation that everyone has in their head especially for a guy or a girl whether it doesn't matter the roles that you're playing is just like don't call them like why would you call them why would you call them you have exactly. a reason why you're calling them like what's exactly. going on here something something's up right like, there's blood in the water and something's not right here like something's yeah especially like i just watched the episode right now where yeah, she uh, they get into like a little argument, and then 
where are you going, Rose? Or where are you going, Sylvia? And she's like, oh, I'm going to Will's divorce party. We're going to hang out, da, da, da. And he's just like, okay, cool. Yeah, have fun, babe. See you soon. And if it's even like something like that, like, yeah, I feel like we normally would assume a guy to be like, wait a minute, who, you're going to Will's divorce? Like, what are you talking about? You about to be go rage with this yeah. dude? I don't get it. Um, so, yeah, man, it's a real beautiful thing we made, bro. I'm really happy. That's awesome. Uh, we teased it at the top. Got a couple more for you. We're going to go in clockwise or some, not clock. Who knows? We're all in a square right now. Okay. In circles. So what we'll do is uh, I'll go, f- I'll kick it off. I'll go to Alex. I'll go to Nick and then you'll go four five. Okay. So we'll go with our fifth. Our, from the top five, we'll go backwards. Okay. If that makes sense. So we're starting, so we're starting at five. Starting at five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Starting at five. All right. Now can this, now we're, can this be movies he's been in or can it be, thi- it's, it's movies, right? We're doing movies. Movies, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Because he's done TV now. He's got one of the best shows TV too. But yes, I got you. Okay, we'll do. I got you. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, movies. Yeah. We'll move. Uh, yeah, we know uh, TV's obviously wildly right. successful. But we'll, go, we'll go movies. That's, what, right. that's the name, right. name of the game. A very. This is a very tough decision, honestly, because there's a lot of good options. I think personally, number five, I'm going to go neighbors. Okay, okay. I'm going to uh, head in the animated direction. I'm going to go with Sausage Party. I'm not mad at that. Okay, I'll go with... Uh, uh, I'm going to go with Four-Year-Old Virgin. Ooh, okay. Okay. I'm going to go... I'm going to start with a dramatic undertaking of his that I thought was very impressive. He played a real person. He started along some studs, and that's Jobs, him playing Steve Wozniak in the movie Jobs. He was incredible in that movie. Not a lot of people know. Awesome. He's great in that movie. Awesome. awesome. And then what's your four? We, we, we snake it. Uh, so I'm going to go with Sausage Party at number four. That's my number four. Yeah, it's incredible. Nice. I, I am as well. I, I saw that movie for the first time uh, on some marijuana, and it was amazing. <laughs> really good. <laughs> I was super high when I saw that too. I feel like you had to be kind of. Uh, I'm mm. gonna go with the uh, just a, a holy triumvirate that was featured in this movie. Um, it's a holiday flick, the night before. Mm. That's a good one. That's, That's a good one. I, I love the job so pick. Honestly, I'm, really I think I slept. Yeah. Dude, I, that's a great <laughs> call. I'm bummed. I said. I slept. I'm gonna stick with my list, but I'm bummed. I I'm just want to throw it out there that I'm bummed. I slept on that. Uh, I, it's okay. My four, my four, and then my three. My four is Pineapple Express. Mm. Uh, my three is The Disaster Artist. I thought he crushed that too. I thought mm-hmm. that movie was. I thought The Disaster Artist was hilarious. Toss. Um, my three is Knocked Up. Which okay. Trey, I would say. Yes. Uh, throw everything out the window that he does as a new father in that movie for yourself there buddy <laughs> yeah yeah right. Yeah. right he's not the best oh, what, not, in that movie. yeah yeah i'm gonna go pineapple express number three nice trey you're three two yeah for my number three i'm going to take knocked up uh it's it's the best it's the movie to put him on the map him and katie heigl together great yeah knocked up sure and then uh Number two is gonna have to be super bad. Super bad is uh, just, I think, a perfect film. It's so funny, um, so well acted. Such a good choice by him to have Jonah play it. Yeah, great movie. So I go two one, right? No, it's just two. Oh, just two. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go. Uh, this is the end. Mm. Number two. Yeah, my number two. My number two. <laughs> Now I'm realizing which in my top five are not featured, and I'm getting mad at myself. That's okay, though. My number two, yeah. he plays a lead in this movie. He plays the main lead, the long shot. I don't know if y'all have seen that movie with Ooh. him and, and Charlie's Theron, but he is so good in that. That movie is hilarious. I think it was totally slept on. Um, I love that movie. I, it's awesome. Yeah. I forgot about that one, honestly. Really good. I want to, yeah. That, I want to give a shout out to Monsters vs. Aliens. I have a, that's not in my list, but I know, but it, but <laughs> well, I know Kung people that love that to movie Kung though. Panda in the too. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Kung Fu Panda, yeah, the Lion yeah. King. Yeah. Shout, there's a lot of shout outs he deserves. Yeah. Uh, okay, so my number two, this is the end of my number one because I think it's, I actually legitimately think it might be the greatest film of all time. That's also that. my number mm. one for the same reasons. 
and yeah, it's the best com. It's definitely the best comedy in in our lifetime for sure. Yeah, you're you're going to Hollywood. Three S's, super bad. One. <laughs> Trey, Trey, what's yours, dude? I I I personally got Pineapple Express, man. I think okay. to combine to, to to be able to get that movie made in general, like on paper, yes. that movie is absolutely insane. And to get that movie made, and the fact that not only is it absolutely hilarious, it is a legitimate action film with death and destruction and mayhem. Like it is a real action movie, great stunts. Yeah, I, I gotta go Pineapple Express, bro. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, 